But I will also be spending some of that time learning about some better techniques to train AI, like deep cue learning and PPO. I didn't know. How could I have known? Don't look at me. I'm a changed man. The cold bullet you knew and loved is no more. I've seen shit. I've done shit. Shit you couldn't even imagine. One doesn't simply learn cue learning. It changes you. It changes and distorts you into everything you once hated. I I'm sorry, this needs to be a little more dramatic. Can we make this black and white, please? Thank you. All right, where were we? All right, it changes you, man. I found myself saying things I once despised. Things like, Python isn't even that bad. And I guess we don't need semicolons after all. All right, let's start from the beginning. To set the scene, the year is 2018. People will still saying things like, I can't wait for YouTube Rewind, and TikTok will never catch on. It was a simpler time. A young, naive code bullet was planning on learning something new over Christmas. Something quality. Something quite quaint. Something quizzically questioning. Something... Wait, hold on. Uh... Quenched? No, that makes no f***ing sense. Wow, that was a long intro. Holy shit, I am sorry. Ah, uh, I didn't really know how to transition out of talking like a dickhead. So I'm sure by now, most of you- wait, hold on. <clears throat> oh, I don't feel so good. Oh shit, it's coming. Okay, there's no stopping it now. <sighs> fuck, fuck, oh god, it hurts. Oh, they said it wouldn't hurt. Fuck, oh god, okay, 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 fuck. Okay, 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 I'm okay, okay, I, I dig it, I, I can work with this, it's about time I got an upgrade, like, the fact that my arms are actually attached to my body, that's a nice feature. So a huge thanks to an artist I've been working with over the past few months, who goes by Dachi, he really does great work, and I was really happy with the results, so you should check him out on Instagram, at dachi.art, link in description, anyway, back to it, I'll drop the shitty PTSD vibe we had going, and deal with the pain of the project like I normally do, through depressed laughter. Uh, so, I'm sure by now most of you are asking what the is a cue learning. I'm not going to go into a large amount of details because I'm a man with limited number of f**ks to give and I also don't really know what I'm talking about, however that has never stopped me in the past. But I will do my best to explain the gist of it. So in my previous projects, whenever I made a learning AI, I used NEAT, which is essentially an attempt to copy evolution in nature. In a nutshell, to NEATify a program, you need to generate a bunch of random players and then test them out. The ones that do better are allowed to breed and thus the next generation is filled with the best players. Then the best of them are chosen and this process repeats until they're pretty good at the thing they're doing. But there is a problem. This really isn't learning. It's just kind of selective breeding. It's like if you want to have a child who can jump really high. Instead of teaching them to jump, you just sit it on the floor and see what it does. If the kid sits there and... Ah, uh, yeah, actually, look, this analogy isn't the best, and I don't really want to go into the details of murdering and selective breeding babies who are genetically designed to jump. The point is, this isn't how humans learn, which is essentially the goal of all learning AIs. God managed to find a way to do it without slaughtering millions of babies, so maybe we should follow his example. This is where cue learning comes in. It's basically a carrot and stick approach to learning. If by chance an AI does something which we want to encourage, say it gets a coin in Mario or it subscribes to PewDiePie, we want to give it a reward. If it does something bad, like driving a car into a wall or using coriander as a garnish, we give it a smack. Of course, the reward is just a number, but you do not want to underestimate how much AIs love numbers. They f***ing live for numbers, f***ing addicts. Not like me though, I'm I'm clean now. <laughs> sure, sure numbers are amazing and everything, but that's 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 in my past. So Q-learning is like that. They do good, you give them a reward, they do bad, you punish them. So at the beginning, the AIs just do some random shit and the AIs will gain experience and learn what to do and what not to do. A real basic example I made when I was just starting out on this journey was I made a mouse that wants to find some cheese. So at the start, a mouse doesn't know what happens if it touches a cat, nor does it know that touching the cheese is a good thing. It just moves randomly until it gets attacked by cats a few times and figures out that cats are dicks, and that he's much more of a dog kind of mouse. It eventually randomly stumbles into cheese and then learns that cheese is life, and then from there on, it can associate cats with a negative reward and cheese with a positive reward. It also associates the area around the cheese with a positive reward because it knows that getting into these spaces will get it closer to that sweet, sweet cheese. And then the spaces around those spaces also become positive, and then this is repeated until every Every space is given a numerical value based on how good it is to be at that space. So as the spaces get closer to the cheese, they're given a higher value. Then all the AI needs to do each turn is to move to the highest value possible and eventually that will lead it to the cheese. 
Okay, so as interesting as a mouse trying to find some cheese is, let's get to the meat of this video. It's car time. Okay, so we're gonna do like a top-down car driving game sort of thing. So let's start with a basic rectangle which goes up and down in a similar way to how a car would move. Okay, so pretty simple. Let's try to get that bad boy turning. All right, fantastic. Now, the true question is, can it do both at the same time? And the answer is no. <laughs> no, it cannot. All right, so that, that wasn't supposed to be difficult, but you never know on this channel. All right, so for this game, we're gonna need a track and the car's gonna need to stay on the track. If it hits the side of the track, then the dickhead dies. Simple shit. So we're gonna need a way of detecting when the car collides with the sides of the track. Okay, how are we gonna do this? Basically, the track is gonna be made up of a bunch of lines, which are the edges of the track. Then we need to check if the rectangle representing the car is overlapping any of these lines. If so, then we kill the car. But how do we know if the rectangle is overlapping the lines? Great question, mate. So there exists a formula which can tell you if two lines are intersecting. So what we need to do is convert the rectangle into four lines and then check if any of those lines making up the car intersect with any of the walls of the track. And if so, then we got a hit. Here's a cheeky demo showing off the collision detection. Very nice. And now we just need to make a track out of lines. Something like this, only good. So I tried making the car a little bit smaller and while technically the car is smaller, uh, yeah! another problem has emerged. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I should probably fix that. All right, let's make the actual track. Fantastic, we've got the game pretty much done, and the final thing we need to do before we add the AI is how the AI is gonna actually see the environment. So the car is gonna see in a similar way to how bats and shit use echolocation. Basically, we're gonna send out lines in many directions from the car and get the distances to the walls in those directions. To do this, we can just use our trusty old line formula. Not only can this bad boy tell you whether or not two lines are intersecting, it can also tell you the exact point they are intersecting, which allows us to get the distance to the walls in a given direction. So one line is great and all, but let's add a couple more. Hell yeah, look Looking good. Now we can actually remove the track and you can see exactly how the car sees. Okay, one final but very necessary addition is drifting for days! Woo! Ah, 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 and away. <laughs> Okay, that's probably a little too much. Yeah, so I dialed it back and we are good to go. Okay, fantastic. It is time to AI that bitch. And while I have done plenty of AIing in my day, there's a special place in hell just for this one, right next to Coriander. So we've seen some basic Q learning in action with the mouse thing. However, to make Q learning truly powerful, you're gonna have to chuck in some neural networks. So we're basically combining an attempt to copy a human brain with an attempt to copy how humans learn. It's good shit. I don't normally use libraries while coding, but for this project, there is no way I could do everything from from scratch. And for my audience who doesn't code, when programmers say shit like, I'm going to be using libraries, that's just fancy talk for I'm way too lazy to do it myself, so I'm just stealing someone else's code. So I'm going to use a very popular machine learning library called TensorFlow, which basically handles all the fancy neural network stuff for me. The only problem is TensorFlow is written in Python. However, I usually code in JavaScript, but luckily there is a JavaScript version introducing TensorFlow.js. So great. So I spent the next few days trying to learn how to use this bloody library. And to use this library, you're going to need to know how to use a myriad of other fancy JavaScript stuff, which I didn't sign up for, like promises and just other, it's it's a mess. So yeah, and after about two to three days of just watching coding train videos later, finally figured out how to use tensorflow.js. Now I'm ready to attempt to write the Q-learning algorithm. It was at this point in this project where I had my first major aneurysm, which was triggered by something known as placeholders. So to explain this, you're going to need to understand that tensorflow.js is a pretty good copy of the original TensorFlow, which is written in Python. And for the most part, it does a decent job. However, something I found out after after learning tensorflow.js was that it doesn't have something known as placeholders. And I don't want to go into the details, but I fucking needed placeholders. I've only got like two days of experience with this shit and every single tutorial on Q-learning ever uses placeholders. So that's fine, that's fine. It's it's fine really, I'm, I'm not mad. I'm not gonna cry myself to sleep or anything. I'm a big boy. All right, so starting again. So after crying myself to sleep, I started learning about how to use the original TensorFlow, which is in Python. I probably pulled the plug on using JavaScript a bit quickly, but I was fucking sick of this shit. And also apparently tensorflow.js is like 10 times slower than its Python counterpart. So we're using Python from this point on, which is great. Except I have no idea how to do anything in Python. I have never created a game in Python. So first things first is that I need to learn how to do that and then recreate what we've already done in JavaScript. So after some searching, I found a library called Pygame, which allows you to make Python games in a similar kind of way to the way I was doing it in JavaScript. So that's great. So like two days later, finished learning how to use Pygame and recreated the game perfectly. And here it is. Fantasto! Oh, wait, did you see that? What the fuck is going on? Let's play that slower, frame by frame. 
So some angry Googling later, I found out that Pi Game doesn't have a feature known as V-Sync, which is kind of complicated, but it pretty much allows the frame rate of the game to sync up with the refresh rate of your screen. In simple English, it means Pi Game is a piece of shit. Oh, that's probably not fair. It's generally not too much of an issue, but after doing this project for weeks now, I don't want the final product to be a jittery mess. So you know what that means? Ring the bell. It's time for your boy to cry himself to sleep again, only this time with more alcohol. Man, do I love starting again. Ugh. Okay, deep breath. Uh, it'll be okay. All right, temp three. This time I'm going to be using a library called Piglet. Now, Piglet is a much less commonly used library than Pygame, which means that all the tutorials I could find out there were from this guy, which is better than nothing, but it's not that much better. It's very, very simple. So import Piglet. Again, that's probably not fair. I'm just pissed off at this point. <sighs> So that's fun. Um, and once again, I spent one to two days learning how to use this thing and rebuilt the game until we have a game in Python and it works. Woo! Hell yeah, I've done it. Okay, so we're finally up to the point where we we're at in JavaScript and it's only like a week later. Don't worry about that. Uh, which makes me so happy that we've hardly made any progress in a week, which that's that's fantastic. That's awesome. So now we need to AI the bitch, which I did and everything's actually going well. After running it for like a day, the AI has made amazing progress and has figured out how to do jack shit. What are you doing, mate? <laughs> So a few more days of crying and working on my number addiction, I tweak the AI and I managed to get the thing close enough to f***ing work and I don't care anymore. I hope you guys f***ing enjoy this shit. So at the start of the training, the AI doesn't know shit. It doesn't know what a car is, it doesn't know that it's supposed to go forward, and it doesn't know that it's supposed to avoid the walls of the track. The only thing the AI can do at this point is just to move randomly and gather experience. Remember I said Q-learning works by giving the AI a reward or punishment based on its actions? Well, in this case, when to give the punishments is pretty simple. If the AI hits a wall, then we say, Mate, that was a f***ing terrible idea. Give it a spanking and let the AI try again, hopefully learning something in the process. The reward side of things is not as clear cut. If a player gets a reward from doing a lap around the course, then there's no way the player would figure out what to do. Because in order for the AI to know what is positive, it needs to be able to randomly stumble into a reward. Which, well, you're looking at the AI doing random shit now, and it's fair to say that it's never gonna make it all the way around the track. For humans, it's pretty obvious that what needs to be done is to go around the track, but this assumption is based on heaps of previous knowledge about what a car is, what what a track is, how the car moves, and way more. The AI has zero previous knowledge about the world before it's chucked in the game. So for the reward, I put what I call reward gates at points along the track, and every time the AI crosses one of these gates, it gets a lollipop because it's been a good boy. And from this, it knows that it needs to keep going through the gate. Okay, so after letting the AI train for a few minutes, we get to game 300. And that might sound like a lot of training, but keep in mind that queue learning generally takes a long time. Anyway, at this point, the AI has more or less figured out that what you're gonna wanna do is go forward. Problem with going forward is if you look very carefully you might notice that the track turns slightly to the right right about here. It's rather hard to notice, but if you can't see it, then please pause the video and continue until you've seen it. Shitty jokes aside, this is quite the problem because clearly the AI is having some trouble. 500 games in and the AI has figured out how to turn right enough to miss the wall, but not too much, so we hit the other wall. The AI at this point is moving very slowly and scared because it really doesn't want a spanking. It's still far from perfect, but it can pretty consistently turn... Uh, ignore that. As I was saying, it can pretty consistently turn to the right. After 800 games, the AI hits the first sharp corner and gets confused and dies. After about a thousand games, the AI has figured out the first turn and has reached the second, where it proceeds to get confused and it fucking lives and then dies. At this point, I went to sleep and let the AI train overnight. And when I woke up, I kind of expected it to have not improved or somehow gotten worse. Both things have happened to me during this project, but no, I was greeted with this bloody drift master. Look at him go. It's important to know that this has gone much further than simply finishing a lap and trying to stay alive. The AI is trying to go faster and faster because it wants to get as many rewards as it can in the shortest amount of time. So instead of taking the sharp corners slowly and safely, it's fucking Tokyo drifting all over the place to go as fast as possible. Hell yeah, we done boys, we done. I really didn't expect this project to take so fucking long, but live and learn. However, do you know what doesn't take long? Brilliant Dog's daily problems. Woo!
Ow! <laughs> Nailed that smooth transition. Every day, Brilliant.org puts out a daily problem. Each daily problem provides you with all the context and information you need to tackle it. So it's not about rote learning useless information. It instead requires you to take all the information given and apply some logical thinking to solve the problem. If you like the problem and want to learn more, there's a course quiz that explores the same concepts, but in greater detail. If you're still confused and you need more guidance, there's a community of thousands of learners discussing the problems and writing solutions. Daily problems are thought-provoking challenges that lead you from curiosity to mastery one day at a time. So if you've got five minutes free a day and a desire for learning, then go to brilliant.org slash code bullet and finish the day a little smarter. The first 200 legends to sign up will get 20% off an annual subscription, which will allow you to view all problems in the archives and also allow you to support this channel and allow me to keep making this sort of content and pay for the therapy that I now need after this project. So it'd really be a great help if you could go check them out. All right, woo! Thank you guys for that. <laughs> what a video. God, this is taking so long. <laughs> Oh, I'm so keen to move on from this shit. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching up to this point. Um, once again, I want to thank my artists for my new avatars. They, they look great, I think. Check them out at Instagram, link in description and all that. So since I'm getting fan art that I really don't think I deserve, I've decided to start putting it in some of my videos. So if you're going to send me some fan art or animations, either send it to me on Twitter, at CodeBullet, or you can chuck it in my fan art channel on my Discord. Also send me a social media handle if you want to shout out in the video. One final thing to add is we're about to hit 1 million subscribers which is a stupidly large number but i'll take it i'll do a shitty 1 million sub special nothing fantastic like a face reveal or anything you ain't getting that yet so don't get your hopes up i'm just gonna do like a q a thing so if you have any questions then send it to me on twitter with the code bullet q a hashtag i i think that's how twitter works um yeah so i also want to shout out a bunch of smaller youtubers because i think there are heaps of youtubers which deserve way more subs so if you know a youtuber in the field of computer science which you think deserves a shout out let me know on twitter at the same hashtag i'll contact all the youtubers before shouting them out because some people don't really want them. Uh, but yeah, hit me up. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.